Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Joseph. I'm a radiology resident and I have the Made by Jay Willis Studio Group. And this is a question that Rob Royal asked about making a design here for this arm mount. And I think he was specifically asking about how to make these ribs on the back. And I wanted to briefly just mention that this is really more of an injection molded design. And the reason for that is you have to have equal or approximately equal wall thicknesses. So if this is one big solid part, there'd be a lot of warping involved because of the mechanism of injection molding. As it as the plastic cools, it would cool differently. Uh, obviously it would cool faster on the outside than the inside. And that would cause it to deform. So if you pay attention to most of the injection molded parts, their walls are relatively the same size. So they use these ribs, uh, as you can see in some of these examples here, to reinforce the part and kind of give it some stability and strength while keeping the wall size relatively the same. So I'm going to try and make this. I'm not an injection mold expert, but I know some basics of it. So we're going to jump into Fusion and get started. All right, so this is a design that I practiced with. I actually made a couple versions of it because I wasn't really sure the best way to do this, but I think it turned out relatively close to what Rob was looking for. So we're going to try to basically recreate something like this. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to make this flat first and then at the end after we make the ribs we can add this taper to it and i'm going to make this part kind of manually where it's or where this wall is and then uh, i'm going to shell out this back side to add the ribs so all right so now let's go ahead and get started i'm going to start on the side here i think that makes the most sense and i'm going to click r for rectangle and then just start with the rectangle here and then it comes down and then over and then down again if i remember correctly yeah so i'm, I'm basically going to look at it like this so we're going to make that l now so make it come over this way and then make it come down again something kind of like that and i'm also let me go ahead and just dimension this first. Uh, I don't really know the dimensions of this, so let's go with like 15. And then the height, do like 60 or so. And then this, maybe like 30. Again, I'm just kind of guessing on this. I think this looks about the same, around 15. And then... I think I actually made this a little bit bigger and then at the end I was going to basically make it angled from here down and then this part I'll just go ahead and make 15 as well. And again I don't really know the dimensions of the, of the design so I'm just going to go through it the best I can like this and then the next thing I wanted to do is go ahead and make like that wall for this part so I'm just going to make a rectangle here something like that and don't really know the exact dimensions of the wall again but just assume it's about five or so, and it's going to draw that kind of manually out here. And there's probably better ways to do this, to be honest, but this is the way I thought of doing it, and it turned out okay. Uh, if I had more time to think about it, I might think of some other ways. So what you're looking at here, I think it'll make more sense when I actually extrude it. So what I'm going to do first is extrude just this part, and I'm just doing half of it. So let's do like 10 or so. That probably is about right. Click OK, and I'm going to bring that same sketch back up and then extrude just the wall part, and then let's just make that like one. Again, I don't really know the wall thickness isn't i think generally speaking one to two millimeters is a pretty decent wall thickness uh, usually but i could be wrong because i'm not an expert at injection molds like i mentioned so now i'm going to mirror this so if you use your imagination you might can kind of see the general kind of outline of the part and now i'm just going to go and ha add the uh, circle up here so i would have obviously measured the part if i was doing it um, in real life but I'm just going to go ahead and, and, you know, guess essentially on the sides. so i'm going to make this solid for now and i'll come back and uh, do the rest of this later so also want to include all of that to make it round and then do the same thing on this side. So again, make a circle here, finish sketch, and then extrude that all the way out. I actually forgot my, forgot my uh, hole in the middle of that sketch. I'm going to go back and make that. I'm just making it five millimeters because that's just a, looks about right. It might not be perfect, but that would probably work. And so now you can kind of see that we have that basic design on this side at least. So I'm just going to go back to that other part here. So you can see here, I've basically done the part that you can't see. So I haven't added the fillets, but I've added this wall on this side on the back. And I'm not really sure what it looks like, but I'm going to assume that there's a wall back there on both sides. And then I added this. These are straight at the moment, but I'll, I'll add these uh, other features next. All right, so the next thing I need to do here is cut out these whole, these circles so that when I shell everything, it won't uh, affect that. So I'm going to just split the bodies and I'm going to reattach them at the end. So split body and I'm going to use this circle on both of these. Click OK. And then we should be able to see that. Okay, and then now I should be able to add a shell here. And so I'm going to go ahead and just take this out as well. And so you should be able to see how I'm kind of going about this now. So I'm going to bring back the two bodies. If we add that, uh, that pattern here, it looks fairly similar. So, I mean, it's not absolutely perfect, but this is the general method, right? So, and so now that we have the shell, the next thing we want to do is make those ribs. So if we go back to this one, we have the ribs there. So what we need to do with that is create... Uh, a sketch, but first I want to show you what we're going to use. We're going to use this thing called web. And if you look at the kind of infographic there, it shows the lines that are not uh, fully constrained essentially. So it's a little bit different than other sketches and other features. So you just need the line and then it kind of automatically connects. So I'll show you that now. I need to make my sketch in the right spot. So you start on the, the base, kind of the floor of, of what you want to make the pattern on. And what I'm going to do is just create a line like this. 
I'm going to make another line just by clicking L in the opposite direction. And then I'm just going to make these symmetric and then I'm going to find the midpoint here and then just come straight down and then turn that into a construction line. And then I'm going to make these, uh, let's say like 60 or so, and then let's make a horizontal line kind of as a guideline straight across and then make this 30. All right. And then now we have that done. We should be able to use this. I want to make this or perpendicular or horizontal vertical so it doesn't move around. Okay, and then dimensioning. You can play with this dimension some if I need to, but uh, let's just dimension it from there. And see what that turns out as. So that, that's all you have to do for this to work. So before I was trying to kind of constrain it to the edges and that makes the, the rib kind of stick out further than you want it. So you actually want to have space between it kind of auto adjust. So that's kind of a nice feature of it. What I'm actually going to do is just pattern this down and hopefully that'll work right. So, okay. And so how you use the web is you click create and then you click on web and then you select both of these and then you'll see it can, it has these uh, menu here and we want to do thickness of about one millimeter. That's just a good place to start. And it automatically does the extent type two next, which because of this design is up here. So we need to change that to distance and then we can just pull this up as, as far as we want to. And you can see here it's extending automatically to the wall. So that's, that's what I was talking about earlier. And this looks like the right distance for us. The other things to pay attention to is you need to do from bottom because that affects how the draft angle is applied. If you had the sketch up at the top, then you could do obviously uh, from the from top. And then draft angle, uh, hopefully this will show up. So what this is doing is it's controlling how thick, it's basically tapering the wall. So it's hard to see from this angle, but if we look at it kind of this way, you can kind of see how it's tapered, if you can appreciate that. Uh, and what we actually want to do in this case is do a negative two degrees. And so now you can see how it tapers the opposite direction. And the reason you need this is because the injection mold goes in and then it has to eject the part. And if you have straight walls, there's too much friction. So the taper makes it, once it's dislodged, it kind of falls out. Because if you can imagine like there's a grid pattern making this, the tool will pop out a lot easier if you're tapered in this direction. So theoretically, we need to taper all of these walls and we can do some of that later on. But I think now since we're making these ribs, it's a good time to add that in. And so I'm going to click OK. And so now we have kind of our first rib and now we can just do rectangular pattern and then select feature. We're going to select that rib. Then our axis, we can just select that. And now we can add a couple more ribs. Uh, we can do four in this case. So something like that. And if we need to adjust it later, we can, but you know, that's pretty close to what that design was. So now we have the ribs in there. And so now we really need to just make some small modifications. So one thing we need to do is add the holes for this part. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to bring back those sketches. I think it's two and three. And so I'm just going to extrude out these holes now and they're still not connected. So this is an independent body. So if I hide that, they're, they're not connected. And, and there's a reason for that. So the main reason is when I shell these here in a second, it'll shell it how, how I want it to shell it out. So if we go back to this one, you can see that I want the shell to be like that. And uh, I think that should work. So we're going to shell this again. We're going to make that one millimeter. And so that's kind of the effect that I'm going for. And then shell this one as well and make it one millimeter. I might have done those together, but uh, anyway. And so now we need to do the same thing here with that uh, sketch down here. And so now we're just going to make the lines uh, in this area. And I, I don't really think you have to do much else than just kind of making these lines. I probably could pattern the rib, honestly, in a, in a circle, which is probably the better, more efficient way to do it. But for stuff like this, I think just go ahead and just knocking it out with sketches is probably just as efficient in a lot of cases. And then we can actually try that on the next one. So again, create web. And so we're going to select that, 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 make it one millimeter. And so that one automatically worked correctly. And then we want to make the draft angle again around one millimeter or so. And so that's actually the opposite way. And a lot of times I just guessed which direction. And so that is a lot thinner, which part of the reason for that, I believe, is that it's just so long. Uh, let's see if there's some. So I need to change to from bottom. That was the issue. That's what this is talking about is it's basically starting from here and going down. So we want to do from bottom. And then we want to make this, uh, let's see. Yeah, so I think it does need to be negative one. And part of that, the reason why these are different thicknesses is because this rib is going all the way down to this face, whereas this rib is only going to this face. So since there's a difference in, in uh, height, then these ribs become different thicknesses. Yeah, so they're tapered the correct way. So if you can look carefully at that, you can see that the bottom is wider than the top. So that's tapered how we want it. So, and then we're going to click OK. And so we'll do the same thing with this one. So I'm going to select the bottom. And you can do the same thing from the ceiling, from the top. Now let's try this time to just do one and see if the pattern will work correctly. So I'm just going to do one of these and then I'm going to create a web again, select that, make it one millimeter. And then we're going to do from bottom and then we're going to make a one degree draft angle. So that didn't work. Interesting. So maybe I have to make this a little bit bigger, uh, but it needs to be negative one. So I don't really understand how they determine when you need a negative on some of these things. So I just basically put it in keep going because it's not really intuitive in a lot of ways. So that looks the same as far as the paper goes. So I'm going to click OK. And now I'm just going to do a pattern. So create pattern, circular pattern, and then I'm going to select feature this pattern and then select the axis as that. And then I want to do four and click OK. So that worked.
So you can, seems like the web works pretty well with patterns. So the next part, this is uh, getting close to where I wanna be. So another thing, this is kind of a new feature that I don't do much is uh, making this draft. So this is also kind of an injection molded thing and you'll see why in a second. So the pull direction, that's talking about which way the uh, machine is gonna pull out. So I'm just gonna select this and then we'll see kind of what that means. So it's, if that's saying we're gonna pull it out this way. So if we're pulling out this way, then this is gonna have to be adjusted so that we can get into that, right? And so I've already found that I made a mistake about not connecting that, which I can go back in and do, but hopefully this gives you an idea of what that means. So when you're ejecting this way, that means you're gonna adjust this uh, angle and not kind of the, the parallel direction, I guess, from the way you're pulling. So again, depending on what the actual product is, you can make different draft angles, but you know, something like five degrees or so that looks about like what is needed. And then hopefully let me click okay. And then I want to move back and then join these. So I need to join those together because now we're kind of ready to have it all as one part. And then we'll add that. So I might have to just select some extra stuff here. So again, the pull direction is here and then the face is going to be that. I'm going to leave it at around five degrees. So that looks fairly similar to the part. I'm not exactly sure again what the size was. And so now the big thing that's missing is the fillets here. So I'm just going to add those real quick. I want to do just fillet and then let's see. Again, not really sure what the right value is for this. And sometimes it gives a little bit of issues uh, with these ribs being so close to it. But I think I'm just going to add maybe five. Let me do seven. So I'll stick with that. And then see if I can do that in most spots. Yeah, so I think if you really wanted to fine tune and copy it, you could adjust how far this pattern goes. And I think if we made maybe just three it would let us change the fillet here. And then the other thing I want to do, I want to add that to here, which this is kind of where it gets a little bit tricky. So if you watch some of my other videos, if you want the wall thickness to be the same, you have to add the, the thickness of the wall. Uh, so this one actually needs to be eight millimeters, I believe, for it to be the same uh, thickness all the way through. And then we need to do a seven millimeter down here and then an eight on the top. And I think that'll work and click okay. And so now we have the fillets we have that other part. It's all put together in one piece. We can change the color now. I don't know what color we want to make this. Yes, blue looks pretty good. Okay. And so we're pretty close. Uh, the last kind of things, again, these are kind of finishing touch things, but you would want to add, if you're really trying to injection mold, design this for injection mold, you'd want to add draft again. And uh, the pull direction this time would probably be up this way. So if we had an injection mold, um, to probably be a push direction, but I think you can still apply that. So we would need to basically make this uh, a little bit, let's see if it'll work. Yeah, so you wanna make this a little bit better uh, on the, or thicker on the bottom part. I'm gonna make like one degree. And so what that's doing again, imagine the mold that makes this, you want this to eject easily. Depending on how the mold is made, if the mold comes in this way uh, and you push it that way, then I think that's the right way to, to change the wall thickness. Then you would also kind of do a similar thing on the inside here. Click okay. And so then we want to make uh, all of, I've already done those, but you also want to do the walls. So and get too much. So again, draft, select this and the faces, it's going to be just a lot of faces to select essentially. These are all the faces that we made initially. There we go. Here, 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 here. Again, I'm not an expert at designing injection molded stuff, but giving it a shot. I don't know why it's not let me select this cylinder. Okay. And so all of those look a little tapered. And the last ones, I'm going to try to make those here. Yeah, so I'm not sure why it's not letting me select that face. So I might have done that in a different order. And then see if we can select this one up here. So again, draft, select that. And then see if we can, yeah, so it's let me select this face. So make this one. So again, you can see how it gets fatter at the base. And then it also let me select these, which is nice. Not sure if I have the yeah okay, so that that doesn't look quite right, but um anyway, so so now we have all the drafts, and then the final thing would be to add fillets. So you essentially want to uh, fillet everything if you're making an injection multi part. For the most part, you don't really want many uh, flat lines. The best way to do that is to do the roll fillet, and then it basically makes a fillet for everything that the that the uh, face is touching. So kind of go pretty quickly through all this and the reason that i believe the reason that you want this with uh injection molded parts is because the tooling for it is a lot easier when you have so if you imagine trying to make a metal piece that's like this thin it's, it's a lot harder to do than making it with this more general curve so that's why you'll see that a lot so basically you just want to select all of the walls which is kind of time consuming when there's a bunch of ribs but this makes it a little bit easier because you have the 
you don't have to select all the edges, which is a big pain. So we're getting most of them. Even the bottom, you really just essentially want to select everything within reason. Uh, so something's failing. So that's part of the deal with fusion is you kind of get ahead of yourself a little bit sometimes. Let's see. It was working a minute ago, so I just need to kind of backtrack a little bit. All right, so now it's working again. If there's ever one that doesn't work, I just come back later and manually get it to work. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Come up here and do these. All right, so something's breaking when I'm clicking on that. It's probably this transition. I just want to add fillets all throughout. If it'll work. All right, so I think I've figured out all those now. So this is pretty close. I think that maybe not absolutely perfect, but it's pretty similar to the design. Again, if we go back to part, it might have tapered some in the back, but it's kind of hard to tell from this angle. But all I think we got the at least the overall concept of it and parts where you could probably go in a little bit different uh, sequence and it might turn out a little bit better. But that's this is how I figured out that it would work fairly. Only so. If you have any questions, and if you want to ask those questions, uh, ask them in the school community. I uh, respond to questions pretty quickly there. It's a free community, so if you're involved, you can just sign up, put in your email, and you'll be good to go. So thanks for watching, and have a good one.